Hello friends, Joe here from Hackerboxes. Welcome to this build session for Hackerbox 0057. This is an extension to our Learn to Solder workshop that we're doing with the Hardware Hacking Village as part of DEFCON 28 Safe Mode. Hope everyone's being safe. Hope you're having a great time. So Hackerbox is the original monthly subscription box for DIY electronics, computer enthusiasts, and hacker culture. Um, the theme of this particular Hackerbox, Hackerbox 57, is safe mode. So the, the primary content item of um, Hackerbox 0057 that we're working on here is this uh, a really cool kit to build this um, exclusive indie badge, um, which we'll talk about more in a second. Um, this hacker box uh, also includes a, um, a practice lock uh, for practicing lock picking and a set of lock picks. Um, there's also some exclusive items. There's a, a branded tube bandana that can be used as a as a safe mode mask. Uh, has a really cool um, circuit board pattern on it. Um, there's also some uh, um, cool hacker stickers. There's an exclusive lapel pin that uh, has our our logo, our um, uh, bit head logo, wearing a, a mask. So it's this special safe mode um, uh, uh, lapel pin. And uh, uh, let's see, there's also a USB cable and, oh, there's an IR remote controller that lets you control your PC. It's kind of like a remote control mouse to use for presentations. And it also lets you control uh, media functions such as um, turning uh, uh, volume up and down and jumping tracks. So, um, and interestingly, because of the IR features of our Indie Badge Kit, you can use that um, remote control, that IR remote control with the, to do some cool things with the badge as well. All right, so the um, the badge kit itself will let you build up this badge. Of course, it has the it has a um, a pretty nifty uh, PCB with the Hackerbox logo on it um, as its basis, and then the um, the processing module on it is is called a uh, an ESP32 T display module. Um, of course, it includes the ESP32. A lot of us are, are pretty familiar with this uh, microcontroller. Um, it, th that, this microcontroller has a, a dual core 32 bit um lx6 microprocessor that can run up to 240 megahertz so it's very full featured for a microcontroller um it also has a built-in wi-fi and bluetooth uh, a whole bunch of like bus interfaces um all the standard stuff a lot of gpios um, and this particular version of it the t-display has a it has an onboard um uh ips full color display it's a 240 by 135 display. It looks really sharp at that, that small size. It's actually quite a lot of pixels. Uh, and it has a built-in USB-C interface. It also has a, a battery charger. You can connect a LiPo battery to it and it'll it'll keep it charged when it's plugged into USB power. All right, so um, the uh, the kit for this board also um, includes um, RCA interfaces for audio and video out. You know, this is a, um, can do composite video and audio out, sort of like a, what we used to have on like, the older 8-bit computers and, uh, um, you know, like you may have had a, a composite output on your Commodore 64 or Apple II computer back in the day uh, if you were uh, as old as I am. So there's also a little um, five-way uh, joystick. It's a little tiny joystick. It's a surface mount device. Um, and there's a couple of buttons. So with this joystick and these two buttons, you can do a lot of um, nice nice controls. There's a infrared receiver and a um, infrared LED for doing uh, IR blasting. So you can receive infrared signals and then blast them back out or blast out different infrared signals. Um, let's see, there's also a little tiny uh, surface not buzzer there for making sound. So you can make sounds on board and then also output um, audio through the um, digital analog converter built into the uh, ESP32. Alrighty, so, um, uh, oh, and of course there's a nice colorful uh, exclusive hacker boxes lanyard as part of that kit that uh, uses a similar graphic to what's on the actual box itself. Um, great. So uh, as far as getting started with this, uh, with working on this kit, we really recommend that you take the T-Display device, um, plug it in <clears throat> to to your computer. Just when you power it up, it'll do a little nice graphics um, demo uh, showing a little dis uh, graphic image, graphical image, and then flip through some color screens. So the advantage of doing that first off before you solder anything is just lets you know the thing works. And then also what you want to do, so this is before you solder anything to it or try to do anything with this little module, we recommend, <coughs> excuse me, setting up the tool chain. So this is a good time to probably tell you that every hacker box has an online um, box guide, uh, which has 
um, lots of different information about how to use the devices in the box. Uh, um, for some projects, it kind of gets you started. For some of them, it gives you kind of the all the build instructions. Sometimes there's some sample code. Or if it's a device that's pre-programmed, we usually try to give you the code so that you can modify it and, you know, do other things with it and hack it and learn from it. So um, the box guide for box HackerBox 0057, the safe mode box, has some uh, sample code for exercising that... Um, uh, the, the badge, but even before you put the T display module onto the badge, there are all the instructions for configuring the um, Arduino IDE uh, as the software tool that can compile uh, code for that board and uh, interface to it. And then also quite importantly, um, setting up the library for um, doing graphical displays and text displays on that, that small, uh, the little IPS display that's embedded on the board. So when you go through and set all that up, then when you power the, the, the board up, uh, rather after powering the board up, you can program it and then just you know verify to yourself that your tool chain works well, that you have the, um, the TTE SPY, uh, uh, I'm sorry, TFTE SPY library set up correctly, and that you can, you know, you can program the, the flash on the, on the board and then have it boot up and run the code you put on it. So that really builds confidence and lets us know that our tool chain is good before we start, you know, taking it to the next level and putting the module onto the badge itself and then start programming the badge. Um, right, so probably now what we should do is just let's go to the overhead and we'll jump into um, soldering this badge together and, uh, and we'll just talk through it as we do it. We'll All right, so for this kit, um, we have a, a baggie of um, components. We have the T display module and the PCB. So these are the three things we're going to be working with. Um, let's get the actual uh, T display module out. This is the um, module that has the actual display um, on it and the ESP32 processor. Uh, the processor has the um, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, functionality built into it. So this display comes without the uh, doesn't have the pin soldered on. They're separate headers, and it comes with a little wire um, uh, uh, JST. Um, uh, connector for attaching the lipo battery to the um battery charger component uh, circuit of the um of the module all right like i said before um before we um get to soldering this uh, module. Let's go ahead and power it up. Just make sure that it works fine. Um, and, you know, before we solder it, we want to go through and make sure all the tools uh, can compile a program for it and load the program um, with the uh, um, right, correct library, which is the TFT East by library for <clears throat> um, controlling the display, the uh, display driver. Okay, so um, let's check out the uh, actual PCB. Um, this is the obviously where we'll be doing our soldering. You see it has a, a side that's a little blacker and a side that's whiter. Um, the black side is the one where we'll be soldering the, um, uh, the components onto. Mm -hmm. So the front of this board, the silk screen, is just used for some artwork. So the silk screen isn't on here. It gives it a, a nicer look when it's finished. It's a little harder to build it, but that's kind of part of the fun. So make sure you go to the box guide and look at the... Um, the, uh, there's a placement diagram that shows where the, the components go. So that diagram is sort of what would normally be on the uh, silk screen if you weren't going to um, have artwork on the silk screen. So, uh, so definitely check that out. And we'll go ahead and start with these three resistors. Um, you can uh, tell which resistor is which by measuring them. There's a, a 220 ohm, a 330 ohm, and a 1K ohm. One, 1K is 1,000, 1,000 ohm. You can measure them with a multimeter, or you can just look at the little stripes. Um, the uh, this one that has an has orange, orange, and black. That's a um, that's three three zero. So that's a three hundred thirty ohm resistor. When you go ahead and put it through, and then just just bend the leads back so it holds it in place. And then the two hundred twenty ohm resistor is the one that uh, is red, red, black, black. And then the 1K resistor. So these go in right next to each other. 
um, you can, uh, again, make sure you look at the um, component placement guide or, um, you know, if you can see really closely up here, the uh, those uh, three resistors, they, it almost looks like they touch each other. The holes, the holes for each, the, each neighboring resistor are very close to the one next to it. So in, in order, they go uh, 330 to 21K from order from left to right. When the wire gets a little kinked on the front side, it's hard to pull it through. So you want to grab some pliers here to pull it, pull it through. There we go. All right, so all the all three of these resistors are through, and the wires are bent back, so they're going to be held into place. And we'll go ahead and get some solder on here. So I have to apologize. The um the white artwork that's on the on the silk screen on the back of this board uh, makes it a little hard to get contrast um, but um, hopefully you can still see the soldering that's going on you know we're using the standard techniques that we've discussed in the in the learn to solder videos of you know starting with it with a very clean tip get some get it make sure it's tinned have some a little solder on the tip because the um the solder that's on the tip helps conduct heat into the work so we want to uh, use the soldering iron to heat, heat heat each joint up so that it gets a little warm and then bring the uh, solder to it and let the let the uh, pieces of metal you're trying to solder melt the solder don't don't melt the solder just with the with the iron tipper you might get a cold solder joint all right and since there's not a lot of metal here the vias the through holes that these uh, these leads go through are, 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 there's not a lot of metal so they don't they don't take but a very uh, quick touch to heat up. They, they're, um, you don't have to hold the iron on there for very long. And those, that looks good. Let's go ahead and trim these uh, these leads off. This is where you want to make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and hold on to the leads while you cut them. We don't need leads flying all over the place. And um, as we discussed in the... Uh, the learning to solder the first learning to solder video we want to make sure we're not getting a lot of chunks of little um uh solder around because solder has lead in it so you know when i am cutting these i try to keep the the surface clean the, my work surface i wipe it down at the end and also when i cut leads i put them in a little pile so i can easily throw them away all right next we're going to do the um the surface mount uh buzzer you can see Uh, that little dot just tells you that that's pin one. Pin one is at the top when the board is oriented like this with the display up. All right, so this is an example of um, of a, um, a surface mount component. We're going to uh, um, basically just set it on the surface and get the um, the pad that it sits on, get some solder on that pad, get it tinned, and then get just enough heat onto the onto the metal, um, the little metal lead on the side of the buzzer, just enough heat on there to melt some solder onto it. We'll get one side tacked down and then flip it around and get the, um, get some solder float onto the other side and just make a nice solder flow that fills in the little L-shaped space between the, uh, the buzzer and the PCB. The, the buttons are oriented with the leads up and down. Um, they won't really fit if you try to put them the other way, but it doesn't matter if you completely rotate them 180 degrees. Like there's no, there's no top and bottom to that, that the button. We just don't want to have a, um, the leads going out of the sides. Although if they, they were going out the sides in this configuration, you wouldn't be able to solder them because they wouldn't be over any pads. So it's pretty easy. Again, just tack one, one little bit down and when the, only one part of it's tacked, you can heat it up very easily and move it, move it around again, and make sure, make sure all the leads line up over the pads um, before you go ahead and commit the other, uh, the other three corners of the button to soldering. Let me get this one on here. Hmm. 
And you can see from the first one we did, we kind of go to the opposite corner. It helps constrain it nicely. It's a similar concept to uh, tighten up, tightening up lug nuts. You want to kind of distribute the, uh, the tension around. I'm um, going across the, you can see there's some, that looks pretty good. There's a nice flow, um, nice shiny flow all over the, uh, the lead and the pad. Oh, zoom here as we get this, uh, down and we have one more pin on each one. And if you want, you can hit the, um, the original pin just to, the uh, first pin you did just to get it, um, get it reflowed real shiny and make sure, make sure all four of the pins look good. All right. Buttons are good. And the next component we're going to do is a little joystick, which looks very similar to the buttons, but it has a lot more leads because it's actually a five-way joystick. So it has a lead for up, down, left, right. And then it has a lead for center, which is when you're just pushing it straight down. And then there's a common lead, which in this, uh, in this design, uh, um, if you check out the schematic, you can see that this, the common, uh, lead on the, um, on the five-way joystick is grounded, which means that the, um, the um, other uh, terminals will all float, so you should probably pull them up uh, using pull, the pull-up description um, definition for your um, uh, when you do the uh, the pin declaration in, in uh, Arduino. Make sure they have a pull-up, so then when you uh, close that contact, it will go to ground, and it'll and the ground will overcome the pull-up, and it'll go to zero. So when it's when one of the contacts is not being closed, it'll be a high, and then when you close it, it'll be a low or zero or false. And we're just doing this nice and slow, getting each uh, each terminal and making sure the solder flows really nicely. All right, we got our joystick done. We got the buttons done. We're cooking in here. Alrighty, so next we're going to put the T display on, um, which has these he headers that come separate. So um, I'm just going to put the headers in here and then put uh, put something underneath it so that the headers aren't being pushed out by the desk, just to, just to make sure everything lines up right and it looks good. Uh, I'll get it on here and then we'll tack a couple of the points, um, a couple of the pins while it's in this position, while it's being held up. And again, usually kind of work from opposite corners. Make sure you, when you're doing this, you get the you get the solder to flow all in down in the hole. And remember, when it when you see the smoke coming out, that means that you're getting the. Uh, oh, let me cut this little tab off of here. This tab is so you can pull the protective plastic off of the display. But I want to leave the plastic on there for now to catch any um any uh, flux splatter. But um, when you see that smoke, when we, you see right here, some smoke will come out. That's when the, the flux is being released, and that's that's when it's the easiest to get the solder to flow. So um, right as that smoke's released and the solder starts to melt, that's when you want to make sure your connection is hot and get the solder into the, into the terminal. So we'll look at this, and you see there's, um, we need to reflow this and drop that that down against the plastic uh, plastic of the header. There we go. Let me get the other one, yeah. So now that header's in there nice and tight. That one looks good. Great. I'll put that back in. We don't need to solder the rest of them quite yet. Let's just get all the get it mechanically seated and make sure everything fits right and all the, the headers are all aligned properly. And we can tack a couple of the pins all the way through on the other side. So for each pin, you actually have to solder it twice. You're soldering it once to the module and then once to the board on the other side. So, um, and again, just like we did with the top, just make sure it's sunk, sunken all the way down, that it's um, completely seated properly uh, in, in at, least, uh, at least a few spots or at least the opposite corners. And then once it's all um, uh, properly seated, we can go through and... Uh, Make sure we get a good uh, good connection and, and flow on each pin. Oh, 
oh, this goes pretty quickly. Get um, it's kind of hard, a weird angle to try to do this underneath the overhead camera. But. All right, I'd like to try to avoid doing this right here where I get too close to this hole because I don't want to get get any solder down there inside the um, T display module. Oh, that would be a big pain, and we'd have to take it all apart and clean it up. So maybe just stay stay to the outside of these headers. Don't don't go near that hole in the, that that uh, void in the PCB. All right, I can get these a lot quicker because I have a easier access from this direction. So. Always cleaning our tip a lot. Keep a nice clean uh, soldering iron tip. Keep the solder flowing. Couple more here. All right. And now we've just got to get all the pins. Uh, so there's 24 pins on this thing. So we're having to make uh, 48 solder connections. So this takes a couple minutes. Just take your time. Um, like I said, leave that plastic covering on the display in case you um, splatter some uh, some flux up onto the display. Mm -hmm. Just turn the temperature up on the soldering iron a little bit. Is that... Yeah, that works a little better. The um the header the posts and for these headers are a little little thicker than, let's say the uh, the. The um the pins on an IC or on a resistor or something so, might just help that I turn the temperature up just a little bit. Turned it up to, three. It looks like it's three sixty here. So just this last row of 12. So it's nice when you when you have the pin and the through hole very nicely heated. You can see the solder almost gets drawn down into the hole and it makes a nice shiny um, kind of in cone shape. Uh, onto the lead so you can see the solder totally wets the down into the hole and then totally wets the lead in, in such a way that it um it fills it in all the way around and makes a nice uh nice clean shiny um well flowed connection all right so there's our t-display so bump the camera a little bit So, display is all done, all um, 48 of those connections. So let's get onto this little uh, driver um, transistor. Uh, notice that the um, one side of it is flat, and if you look at the placement diagram, that that flat is um, is down, is kind of facing the uh, the joystick. So make sure the flat portion of that transistor is in that direction, and you can, once you uh, Get it into place if you want. You can fold it over and make it flush to the board, or you can leave it sitting up. That's totally your option. Um, 
just to keep it out of the way of the uh, display. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to fold it down. I kind of like the way that looks. Fold it right down onto its flat face, but you don't need to do that. You see that solder's real quick because the 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 plated holes are very small on these, very thin. There's not a lot of metal there to, to waste the heat. It just solders very quickly, heats up quickly and solders quickly. We'll uh, cut the leads off. Alrighty. We want to keep checking back to our um, component placement um, diagram that uh, tells us what uh, what direction to put things in. That's definitely important even though there's only two leads on this LED it only works if placed in the right direction the uh, short lead goes towards the flat side in the diagram and uh, I like to leave this sticking up about three or four millimeters so that I can fold it over and it gives it like a nice uh, like an edge bl edge firing edge blasting configuration I like the way that looks and it feels like it's a little bit more like a a, a transmitter um, like a like it would be on the end, end, end of the board of a remote control, uh, like a TV remote or something. So it's just two quick leads. Remember the uh, short lead goes on the, um, uh, on the flat side of the, uh, the circle in the placement diagram. All right, and just a few more uh, components here, continuing on with our our through hole components. We have a little um, ceramic capacitor. This is um, part of the audio circuit um, for the uh, the AV. And with this, you could also fold it over if you wanted to. Is unfortunately where it's placed right there. It's kind of right next to the reset button. So if you're going to use the reset button a lot, you might want to fold that cap over before you solder it into place. But it's no not really a big deal. It's pretty pretty small. And again, that heat flows on that real quickly. Very nice, very quick. Trim the leads off. And then, um, there we go. Oh, and I should mention, we can take the leads off of the, uh, the headers on the back of the display to make it nice and flat if you're gonna put a battery on there I just skip that for now it's a little time consuming and everyone knows how to cut wires so they're not really in the display too they're not uh, the display leads are not really in the way uh, until we uh, try to put a battery on there so all right and this is our um, IR uh, sensor uh, device you want to put it on there so that the rounded uh, lens um, faces down towards the bottom of the board away from the uh the t display the esp32 t display and again uh that makes it so when you're if you set this um the badge down you can uh you can aim a, a remote like an ir remote at it um and it'll uh, receive from one side and then it blasts out of the top uh ir blaster style so. so that's real easy and uh, all we have left is our two RCA jacks um, for our uh, AV for composite video and our um, audio line out. So the yellow one is the uh, video out. We're gonna get that here. That's kind of on the left side. Again, check the uh, component placement diagram on the box guide. So you're gonna to wanna to just get one of these, get just a little solder on one of these and then you know check the positioning, make sure it's the right depth. Um, there's some like alignment holes on the front of these things that don't, don't always work very well. That's why we just let them hang off the edge of the board there. Uh, once you get the three posts soldered, it really holds itself in very well. But, you don't really need those alignment holes at all, or even in the front. And then once it's all positioned, we just get a lot of solder in there to make sure it's very mechanically stable uh, and flows very well. Just because there's a lot of pressure. Sometimes if you have a tight, um, a tight RCA cable when you're plugging it on there, it puts a lot of pressure on the uh, on that jack. So you want to make sure you have it well soldered, 
Um, so not only for a good electrical connection, but to keep it very, you know, very solidly seated from a mechanical perspective. Um, again, we're going to get one soldered, and then we're going to pick it back up and move posi position the um, the connector around until it's right in the right orientation and seat seated the way we want before we put solder on the other three other three posts. That looks nice. This last one here. And that looks pretty good. Uh, I see there's a little bit of the metal on the back there sticking out, so I might want to heat that up and see if we can force it back into the housing. There we go, looks a little better. Now we can go ahead and get a lot of solder in there to hold it into place now that everything's positioned correctly. And that'll hold it real solid even, um, even when we're plugging uh, cables onto it, pulling them off and plugging them back on, it'll uh, Keep everything seated properly. Real good, real, real solid there. All right, there's our fully soldered up board. We have some keycaps we can pop on the uh, buttons and then also the joystick. So let's get these on here. And if you have other buttons like this, you can put different keycaps on. Uh, if you have other um, compatible caps, just make it customize it a bit. Oh, all right. So the um, the first sketch we just loaded on here was um, uh, again. This sketch is in the box guide. It's just a really simple uh, buzzer demo, um, and it does use the. Uh, the TFT eSpy library to um, just put some text on the screen and then it just um, uh, plays some tones out through the buzzer. So let's power it up and you can see that the... Um... Yeah, so, uh, you know, a little Mario music there. So this is a really, um, really simple uh, um, program um, that you can, uh, you can look at... Um, you know what it does it's it, it's it, you know like like I said it's fairly simple and it just shows you how to uh, uh, how to make some sounds on the buzzer so really good kind of first um first sketch to get running after you've uh, soldered up this board uh, part of the reason for wanting to do that one first is even if the library gets messed up or something's not quite working right or one of the pins is shorted or something for the display as long as you have that one wire that gets between the uh, ESP32 uh, T display module and the um, the uh, surface mount buzzer. There's only one wire necessary for that. As long as you have that one wire right and you don't have a power ground to short uh, elsewhere, then whatever else is going on, that this this sketch should work. So go ahead and try that one out first. Um, if that works out out well, which it should, um, you know the uh, the next uh, sketch to try out on the um, from the box guide. Uh, there are a couple links to um, uh, different uh, sk sketches within a library. Example sketches that do. Um, uh, infrared receiving, infrared transmitting, and then also relay infrared signals. So that might be a nice thing to try um, Try next. Uh, they also exercise the serial output. Um, uh, they don't use the display because uh, they're not specific to this particular um, T-Display module, but they do some really interesting things. Of course, you can add in some um, display outputs if you want to do that. But the um, uh, So trying out the, um, the infrared uh, uh, LED blaster and the infrared receiver next, that might be a, a good next step. Um, then uh, probably uh, another another very simple one that doesn't um, doesn't um, isn't too complicated. Uh, it's actually in the guide. You can download it. Maybe let's go ahead and load it up. The uh, the one that exercises the joystick. It displays the state of the joystick on the display. So here, let me get that programmed on here. All right. All right. So on um, on uh, this uh, this one here, we've loaded the um, uh, the sketch from the box guide. That's uh, the joystick. 
joystick sketch. So let's go ahead and uh, fire that up to see how that works. Um, all right, so it just says it's launching a joystick test. And then uh, when you put the joystick, you know, up, down, left, right, or, or press the center button on it, it puts it on the display. And you can actually do button A and B also, and you can actually hold them both down to get A and B and then go down or down and sideways and in all at the same time. And whatever of these uh, contacts you close on the joystick and switches, it'll just put it on the display. So uh, again, just a little pro a little sketch you can run that'll let you know that your, your uh, soldering is right. You've made all the right connections for the joystick and the two buttons. Um, uh, so uh, that, you know, exercises the joystick and the buttons. Um, you know, we, we've, uh, um, the, um, both of the sketches we've loaded use the display, uh, onboard display. And then um, there's uh, some demos for the, for testing out the IR in and IR out. Uh, the easiest way to test the um, audio video is, uh, um, there's a really cool program, uh, there's a link to it in the box guide called um, Dawn of AV. It's from uh, BitLooney. He wrote some really cool code that does um, uh, composite output and uh, um, and an audio line out using uh, the ESP32. So uh, let's load that on there now, and I'll um, I'll, I'll capture the uh, the output so we can see it here. Uh, hold on. Yeah, so so um, outputting to the uh, the composite uh, video and the um, and the audio audio line out is actually uh, that's it's pretty nifty. It, it does require a little bit of trickery, but you can um, check out the Bitlooney's code and see how how that works. Uh, those techniques are the same ones that are used in a really neat project called um, uh, I think it's uh, ESP eight bit um, that lets you uh, emulate um, Nintendo Entertainment Systems and eight bit Atari computer systems. Um, it's it, it's really neat. There's a link to it in the uh, in the box guide. Um, it's really kind of fun to play with. It uses the um, uh, the file system in the ESP32, so the the flash of the ESP32 can be set up to have a have a file system in it, um, and and make sure you follow the instructions uh, clearly in the um, in the in the repo for that. Uh, um, if you want to mess around with that uh, ESP uh, 8 bit project, make sure you set the, the file system up correctly. So. Uh, there's a, a lot of other cool projects um, in in the box guide. Links to the projects that uh, would be interesting. The um, uh, there is a thing called the ESP um, ESP Marauder, which does uh, allows you to extend some um, uh, pen testing tools to uh, leverage the the um, Bluetooth and um, other wireless functionality of the ESP32. So that's kind of a neat project. There's a, a couple other um, projects that are uh, targeted specifically towards the T display. So they'll use the display without too much modification. Getting getting different um, uh, these TFT display modules working at the right resolution for different programs can be a little tricky. But um, you know that's a lot of the fun that you you get with working with these these projects. So. Anyway, um, you know, the uh, uh, this badge is a really nice platform because it has an ESP32 processor, which, um, you know, there's more and more stuff coming out for it all the time. And then it has some really nice IOs that are pretty easy to, to program, you know, the the buttons and the joystick. And, you know, and then the um, uh, you probably won't see a ton of programs out, out there, uh, projects out there that use the uh, AVIO, but they are kind of neat to play with. And there are some, you know, like I said, there's some really neat um Emulation uh, out there that uh, that uses these for doing some retro gaming and some 8-bit computing, and um, and then you can you know a lot of um, programs can be uh, adjusted to use the particular driver for this uh, TFT display. It's a pretty common driver. Uh, it works with a lot of the libraries for doing uh, um, you know color full color graphics displays with the uh, Arduino projects, and particularly ESP32 has the power to really. Um, uh, do some nice displays on that. So anyway, uh, it's a nice badge. Uh, hope, hopefully you enjoyed uh, building it. Uh, take some real pride of ownership that, you know, you made the badge yourself and you can program your own stuff on it. You know, maybe put, put a picture of, you know, yourself or your pet or your logo or whatever on there and, um, you know, do, do some neat stuff with it. Uh, oh, we didn't get into it here, but the uh, guide has the instructions on how to um, use these little pins right here to put a uh, a battery, um, a LiPo battery on here that charges when you plug the USB 
cable in, and then there's a little power switch which came in the parts uh, baggie, the uh, parts kit for this this badge. So you can that that switch will let you turn the battery, the lipo on and off, basically take it in and out of the circuit, so that you can turn the board off when it's just has the lipo plugged in without having to reach in there and uh, remove this little tiny JST connector. Um, just remember though, when you turn the, if you turn that switch off, it actually takes the battery completely out of the circuit so it won't charge. So if you want to charge it, you need to leave it in there and maybe um, write something in your program to have a sleep mode or something so that you can, um, you know, your sound display aren't going wild while you're just trying to charge the battery up. Um, all right, yeah, so we hope you enjoyed this and uh, hit us up with any questions at hackerboxes.com or, um, or during the, uh, uh, if you're watching this live during the, um, uh, Hardware Hacking Village uh, workshops um, uh, will be uh, online in the Hardware Hacking Village channel uh, in the um, uh, in Discord for uh, that's the Discord for DefCon uh, uh, 28 Safe Mode. If uh, if you're seeing this later somehow, um, you know feel free to contact us at uh, hackerboxes.com um, with any questions you might have and uh, um, keep an eye out for future Hackerboxes. We're uh, always trying to come up with new things. We have some some really interesting stuff coming up in the next couple months. And um, we usually have a, a, some nice things a couple months after DEF CON because while we uh, meet up and talk to all of our friends, they always have a lot of uh, suggestions for projects they've been working on and uh, ideas they might like to see in the future Hacker Boxes. And um, for those of you that aren't too familiar with Hacker Boxes, uh, should uh, you just know that it's kind of like a, um, a self-fulfilling community thing because we, um, we get m most of the ideas now for future boxes from uh, members who been playing around with our, uh, you know, our, our, our previous boxes and are trying something new on their own and then think, oh, everyone else might like this and they send it to us. And um, we've had some guest designers from our, uh, our community to um, help us out with some of the boxes. So if you've got some really cool ideas, please reach out to us. We really, we really like that. And um, yeah, uh, live the hack life. We uh, look forward to seeing you online. Drop us a note. Bye-bye.